designed system to attract financial resources. As a person, as a people, as a state, as a nation, the only designed system that, that is made to attract financial resources is productivity. So what do we make in Nigeria? I want us to take a look at everything here. Take a look at my, even his outfits. Take a look at it. Take a look at your shirt. Everything you see here now is a job. This thing is a job. This rug is a job. This red stuff is a job. The projector is a job. And I can tell you that about 98% of the things we have in this room is not made in Nigeria. If I were to be a wizard and I have a wand and I say, if everything that is not made in Nigeria here, it will disappear. <laughs> we'll live here naked. Now, there's something you understand again. Everything that is made in Nigeria here that will remain are in their raw form. Do you know what I mean? The block will remain. The paint may not remain. The cement may not remain. Do you understand? Because there's a clause in our education that says Nigeria exports her raw material to do what? Make revenue. That is a chief characteristic of a third world country. When you export your raw materials to do what? Make revenue. Now, you, countries like China, you cannot see Chinese steel in any other country because they know they have population. So what do they do? They build industries that process their steel to value-added finished products, like what? Cars. Abi? But now we buy those cars and we go to the church and we do what? Give testimony. But God told us to be what? Productive. Now, a Lebanese, when you talk about made in Nigeria, people think it's only goods and services. But a Lebanese saw a language we call Pidgin English. How on a day? How on a day? We can speak Pidgin English. We see it as a conventional term we used to talk. But the, Leba, the, the, the Lebanese saw the media potential in that language. And he invented a radio station called Wazubia FM and employed us and makes millions from that. That platform. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, these people see more. You see Chinese on the road. They are looking at your suya. They are looking at your corn. You think they like it. They have learned it from a value chain standpoint. Now, they are thinking of looking at making that corn to golden moon. But we are thinking of roasting it and eating it 15 naira. Or doing what? Exporting it to a place that will make value added finished products like golden moon and send back to us. Now, um, when you people said some of us came from Abba, yes, yeah, some of us came from Abba. And uh, in Abba, there used to be a textile mill there called Abba Textile Mill. Abba Textile Mill closed down in 1989. And as at 1989, it was employing 8,000 people. That time, when you talk about your culture, you know that you made the prints. Do you understand what I'm saying? I like his outfit. But you see that that his rapper. Other people print those things for us and call it our culture and we go and buy it from them. I get what I'm saying. So anytime you say you're a tailor or you say you have done a startup and you have started selling material, one man in China is doing what? Counting money. Because throughout Nigeria, all the textile mills in Nigeria have closed down. Now, as at 1989, Nigerian fashion industry, what was Nigerian? We didn't even know anything about our fashion industry. But now we do a lot of material, a lot of designs, a lot of, but we don't have a single textile mill. Meanwhile, between 1960 and 1970, the textile industry of Nigeria employed 25% of the workforce of over 145 million people. But today, we are about 200 million. And according to NDIC last year, 98% of Nigerians don't have up to 500,000 Naira in their accounts. You want to argue that, yeah. But you know, the poorest people are not banked. They don't have accounts. Now, poverty has hit us from a standpoint of the fact that we do not produce. Anything that does not give out is diseased. It's just like you have a bird. A bird that's flying. If the bird only eats and doesn't excrete, it will die. Do you understand? Because we have become a reservoir of raw materials. We have learned so much. We have become a reservoir of information. But we are a 200 million people that doesn't produce anything and send out to the world. Because we have forgotten our K-Guide language. Now, this language we call in school, K-Guide, yeah? 
Who doesn't know Kegai Etia? I, I was friends with a lot of them because I studied the language and it was so beautiful. It has media potential. And there are thousands of Kegites all over the country. But what if I have a Kegai radio station? I will employ all of them. That is, you have made a relevant industry from that raw material called language. Do you understand? Now you look at people like Olamide. Olamide, Melo, Melo. You're talking about nursery poems, yeah? He processed it into a song. That was a Yoruba poem when they were in nursery school. Now, the music industry. And Fino will tell you that he picked up his culture and sold it from what? Coast to coast. Because he what? He processed the language into rap. I get what I'm saying. Now, I'll come to a secondary school and I'll tell them, eh, what, is, what do you make from cassava? Everybody raises the person's hand because they know the ready answer. The most punctual answer is what? Gary. And there's another one. There's another English. They, after saying fufu and maybe tapioca, there's another English they start speaking. They'll say cassava floor. What's cassava floor? Cassava floor is Gary. Do you understand? Now, they start speaking their English. And you remember that this is an innovation that was made about 400 years ago by our forefathers. The same way they ate that gary is the same way we eat it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Education has not taught us to, to do strawberry flavor gary. Vanille. Are you getting what I'm saying? We have not, they don't know that from cassava you make ethanol, that all the drinks that we take, ethanol comes from there. Uh, you use a disposable plate, this one that you close, you use a mama put, you close and fix, and you use rubber band round. You throw it away, you see chicken, go to eat it. They don't ask, because that thing is made from what? The cassava that we did what? We exported. Do you understand? Today, Nigeria spends $500 million annually importing oil from Malaysia. This is the same oil Malaysia bought from us. How have we failed the aspect of industrialization? The aspect of the fact that we do not produce anything. I went to modern ceramics. I went to all these places. I look. I ask, what happened to these places? In fact, when I went to Abatex Time, I had to go with a bigger person because I'm not naturally so big. So I had to go with someone that is quite big that looks like he has a lot of money. And we went there. We said, well, we want to know what they do here. They say the place is now warehouses. They have bunkered all the machines that used to sell there. And they were saying, I will give you this one to put what? Okreka products that we still imported to be there and we sell them from there. So you see what our industries have fallen down to be. So I wrote a book. After going down through all these things, I wrote a book that a book, the book will not naturally exhaustively bore you with the terminologies of industrialization. But I wrote a book of policies that says, because I, I believe I'm talking to leaders, because anybody that is aspiring to be a leader will always talk to other people as though they were leaders. God talks to us as if we are gods, you know, right? Now, I did that book, and it's telling the generation the way to go. The fact that our education first, first of all, we'll talk about education. I believe that our education has a huge role to play in industrialization because everything we learn, we didn't learn it from the standpoint of the value chain. We were made to jettison, to throw away our language. Our language was called vernacular in school. And if you speak Igbo language, they will flog you. The prefect will write your name, first of all. And after, the teacher will flog you for speaking your mother tongue. Now, that thing kind of made Opa look local and meat pie look. Now, they tell us again in school that Nigeria has cash crops. They have cocoa. They have, if they have limestone. They have this thing. But do you know what, how Nigeria gets money? Nigeria will export this thing outside the country. And it's processed there. And it's sent back to us. And we still ingest it. Every paper in this room is not made in Nigeria. I've done a lot of contracts for, for prints, media, and stuff. Every paper in this room we have, none of them is made in Nigeria, but we export cocoa. We have not taught a generation how to produce. Now, we keep setting up startups. Ah, education too will tell you, start a business, ah, entrepreneurship. Yeah. And you forget that you're talking to people that have even access to that entrepreneurship. So education should tell our leaders that in a place that produces cassava, there should be an ethanol plant because our education now should start solving our own problems. Our education should now tell us that in a place that is very dirty, we should learn waste management science because everybody will naturally be employed. There's a lot of t-shirts we wear. They come from 
they come from plastic, this plastic bottle. And when it's processed, you get the t-shirts. And I watched this thing. And people are trying to do a lot of things about their climate. You know Leonardo DiCaprio? He's pursuing the climate change so much. And he's taking it from the standpoint of what? Recycling industrialization. Now, you look at the people in primary one now. By the year 2034, they should be, they should be the leaders, yeah? Even if we don't die. By the year 2004, to some extent, they should be the, what are they learning? They are learning the same thing my father learned in school. They are learning the same thing my father's father learned in school. They are learning the same thing. We have not treated our education as infrastructure because we are learning obsolete things. As a nation with 98% not having five, up to 500,000 in their accounts, we should be learning things that are geared towards productivity. We should start garnering skills. First of all, we should, at the end, after a time, you should not send your children to go and still go for lessons and still learn. Let your children go and learn how to bake. Let your children go and learn how to sew. Let them go and learn plumbing 101. Let them learn tailoring. One, are you getting what I'm saying? This is how we gear towards industrialization. Let us learn about our infrastructure. I, looked at, I look at infrastructure from a standpoint of creativity. These lights are on now, but... When you put on this slide, someone comes to your mind, apart from Nepa, someone comes to your mind, who? Huh? Who, did, who invented the light bulb? Yes, he comes to your mind. And that is infrastructure. It was not the president of the United States that did that thing. It was not, it was not the Ministry of Petroleum in the United States that invented crude oil. It was a man, John D. Rockefeller. And when he did that thing, he had a link with the government. And I've also treated it from a standpoint of scale and leadership. There's something we call skillful leadership. I believe that our children should know, the younger generation, because that's the only lifeline we have as a country now. Actually, I'm not a pessimistic person, like I told my friends, but the only standpoint we have, the only footing my optimism has have is that we can inspire people. We retain that ability to tell people this is the way to go. This is the only hope the country has. So pointing the younger generation to the fact that before you lead the people, you should be a leader in the space of your own skill. There's some, many things happening in the country. We want to pursue. You see people say, we want to, ah, productivity, Nigeria, entrepreneurship. And you are awarded one person 100 million because he wrote a business plan. Meanwhile, a company that used to employ 10,000 people that used to service the whole West Africa died because of 500 million. Look at people in the villages. People in the villages develop cassava and they go to farm and they bring it out and they go and sell it at the markets. You will not like to do that thing because you think you don't want to stand in the market with old women and drag with them. But if you know the value chain of cassava. You know that apart from going to that market, you can sell it to a company that produces ethanol, that sells to a brewery that produces drinks. When you get to this understanding, we can treat industrialization from a standpoint of processing. We should go back to processing our raw materials, all our raw materials. There is no other thing God blessed Nigeria with apart from raw materials. God did not bless us with good leaders. God did not bless us with good, even good citizens. We don't have many of them. But there's something that God has always kept with us, raw materials. How do we unearth these things? How do we bring them out? How do we look into them? How do we say, this should go to this, this should go to this? With this, 500,000 people should be employed. With this, 10,000 people should be employed. Imagine that we make papers alone for our schools. Do you know how many tons of paper come into this country every day? Tons that we don't make here. And now you say, ah, I've start, done a startup. I want to start, you know, I want to start a printing press. And any day you say that, and one man in one other country is making a lot of money because they looked at their cocoa and said, no, we have to make paper with this. If not, we will not be productive. Productivity, productivity, productivity. We have to pursue productivity as a people, not, ah, startup, startup, startup. All the startups we have been learning since we have, uh, I was born, we are day to day. Have we asked why this startup starts and there are no more tomorrow? Imagine that when that company was employing 8,000 people, maybe you had a poultry farm and you processed your meat to maybe chicken suya, Abby, and you stood in front of there. You have 8,000 potential customers to sell to, right? 
this is what we have missed out. How do we tell the government to focus again on industrialization? How do we bring education back to learning things from the standpoint of the value chain? How do we not always say we want to consume, we want to consume? How do we produce and say no? Apart from production, we want to mass produce. We want to invent policies. We want to push for policies that say, you will not give collect tax from me if, if, if you're not showing me why I'm paying the tax. There are 50,000 KK people, and all of them are paying 300 naira every day. There are 10,000 bus people, all of them are paying 600 naira every day. There are 50,000 trailers, all of them. We don't even have access to laws. You don't know why they take these laws from you. You don't know why they take infrastructure and scooping. There's something, infrastructure and scooping. You don't know why they take these things. And you look at your phone, you don't even know the last bill that was passed in your state. These are the foundation. Meanwhile, a 10-year-old in the United States, he knows the budget of the state. But many of us here, we don't know. We don't know where it goes. These are the layers of what we should start teaching the next generation. And with this drive, with this movement, with an advocacy for industrial revolution, we should advocate from the standpoint of process. And with this advocacy, we will begin to change our mindsets to the fact that we should begin to produce again. We hardly, even this shoe, you say it's made in Abba, yes. But it was just assembled in Abba because the leather was not made in Abba. The sole was not made in Abba. Thank you very much. <laughs>